Well, I got to apologize today on Marijuana for Dummies. I don't have a good weed porn picture for you. And that's because, you know, when people have special days, those of us who smoke weed, we give marijuana. When you have my friends who smoke weed, when they have like a death in the family, I give them marijuana. When they have a wedding in the family, I give them marijuana. When they're feeling bad, I give, well, you get the point. We give them marijuana. And so recently I had to go to birthdays and all that stuff, and I wrapped up my weed in wonderful little gift, these little gift jars that clamp down and little ribbons, and I gave away marijuana, so I have less marijuana today. I'm down to essentially an ounce and a half. <laughs> but less sativa. That's what I'm saying. The sativa is what I'm talking about. I have less. But of course, I always have some marijuana. There's no time I have no marijuana. I have like a collection of roaches that's wonderful. And, you know, I got a hash collection that'll stand up test of time. But anyway. So there's things in the news this week with marijuana because as it goes on, we've been looking and trying to find what is the source of all this vaping illness. Now, I told people, part of the issue with vaping is the same issue with any type of manufacturing. It's the manufacturing process. The people who make it. I don't care if they're selling you uh, Hershey bars to chips to sodas to water to anything. You have the same issues, Tylenol. That's why you have so many products from time to time that give you scares, right? Scares of products being recalled, people getting sick. Well, in marijuana, you have the wild, wild west because these processes that are being used to create some of these products, they need to be investigated. And now, U.S. officials have identified a strong culprit. But let me say what, what I mean by that. They were looking for a common factor amongst the people who were having vaping related illness. And they think it may be a vitamin E acetate that people use in the preparation. Now other processes for making some of these things are, are equally as suspect to me for the future. They're not known. And they need to be regulated. When I learned about marijuana, in terms of even some of the uh, the extracts, the first thing I said as a physician was, well, what are you extracting it with? <laughs> and how do I know I want it, whatever you're using to extract it, how do I know I don't, I want remnants of that in what I'm smoking? So I'm smoking remnants of what you use as a solvent to extract THC. Yeah, and I've heard of people initially they were using benzene. You know, in other words, the lighter the lighter fluid, okay, mm. that you get used, they were using the benzene, they get the, they were getting somehow using the big canisters of benzene, right. rushing running that through weed or whatever to extract the okay. THC. And I'm going, what makes you think that that is okay? So, Right now, the one uni seems to be the one commonality that they're finding amongst the. I think they found this in like over ninety yep. percent of the folks who, who they're testing. They were testing fluids and salt that they were extracting from people. So, whatever they were saying that it looks like up to ninety percent of them have this in common: the vitamin E acetate, which has been used as a thickener to thicken the vapor fluid, especially in black market. Now, remember, I said getting, I have a vape collection, which I'm comfortable because I bought them from specific places who bought them from specific manufacturers. But you need to be careful. And for right now, it's better not to vape, I guess, until you find out what it is or how they're being. It's better just to smoke some weed. <laughs> Don't vape. Just smoke some weed. Right. Because how they're making these products is the issue. And remember, even if they find this to be the issue with the recent, I still have the issue myself with how these things are being made. And that because of that, I'm 
you know, taking like a temporary hiatus from uh, vaping. Oh, okay. okay. Hey, smart. All right. Now, one of the things that's been going on, too, is this whole issue of California's legal marijuana, which in some ways is a real pain in the ass. Let me explain to you why. For one, they're very slow in rolling out the requirements. Uh, I understand in Los Angeles they're redoing it for like the fourth or fifth time. So black market marijuana is seems to be the way. I told you that when I order marijuana from Glendale or white sides of town, then I get taxed in all the mar. I ordered like two hundred and fifty dollars worth of marijuana products, and I had like eighty dollars worth of tax. Eight, like eighty dollars for tax. You know, even though they bring it to your door, okay. But I'm like, damn. And the weed ain't as good. Now I go by my dispensaries near downtown. And the weed is a lot better, and it's cheaper, and there are no taxes. So I realized that I've been using all probably unlicensed dispensaries, wow. which are probably all black market dispensaries. Right. And I think that's the way to go. <laughs> Let me explain why. California is being an asshole with this, not doing it right, definitely not serving all the communities equally. Like everything else, it seems to be rife with bullshit. Okay, so what I'm suggesting is part of marijuana's legalization that you grow marijuana and certainly never sell it to your friends. I suggest that you grow marijuana and give it to your friends with a suggested donation. How's that? That you struggling to make your rent, you can legally grow marijuana I think it's like 13 plants. So grow 13 huge-ass marijuana plants. <laughs> <laughs> and then trade those marijuana plants for your gardening, your pool repair, plumbing issues. Trade that marijuana or give it as a gift <laughs> to someone in return for a potential contribution to your cause. <laughs> In this way, the inner cities can take over marijuana production and grow it in their good old inner city ground, which we're sure, since it is the inner city, would never be polluted. Unless you're in Houston, then don't buy any of their shit. <laughs> but of course, consider this, but this is part of the issue. They have an issue that California has seized $1.5 billion in weed. Part of the issue was there was a weed glut. The weed is all flowing east. Now they seize the weed, trying to make an artificial weed shortage. <laughs> Again, I suggest you grow some weed and in exchange for a contribution. <laughs> you know, you could have like, instead of you have rent parties, have a weed party. Everybody comes and donates money and as part of the attending the weed party, they can have some weed. <laughs> Here's another related article. California has suspended 394 marijuana business permits in a move that critics say will temporarily, temporary. So now, I wish we could get a racial background on the suspended business permits. I wish we, I know they have a racial background. I know they do. It's like, you know, we know you, you got one. You got one. You got a racial breakdown on the suspended businesses, and we want to know. So the issue for this week for Marijuana for Dummies is how you need to be informed that so-called California legalization may not be helping you at all. By restricting your access to good marijuana flour, leaving vaping out there in an unregulated form, <laughs> and they're not helping you at all. 
and shutting down marijuana businesses, which seem to be, I don't know, once again, primarily affecting people of color. True. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Times are changing, but some things stay the same. You start each morning with a cup of coffee every day. Maybe hit the snooze, turn on. That's right, Marijuana for Dummies. Coming back, we're going to be moving on to the next segment of Morning Coffee with the award-winning Victor Allen's new new sports and hot picks. Come right back for this music. In the meantime, I'll show you some of our latest slideshow. It's happening. We'll see you in a minute. Stop. 